Hi guys, nice to talk to you today. This is kind of a special video we're doing today to explain to you about our fall workshop, which is coming right up at Bisu Boutiques. And the way we do it is we have a series of videos that we do that last from about 10 in the morning till four in the afternoon. So it's a full day of instruction. And we have a little lunch break in there. And um, we do it four or five Fridays in a row, depending on how many we need. Right now I'm planning on four. If I need to do another one, I will do it in order to get everything in, everybody, you know, taught the way they want to be taught. And there will be no extra charge if I have to go over into four. It's going to be starting this Friday, October 14th, and it will be the 21st, the 28th, and November 4th, and then possibly November 11th, okay? And you don't have to be here in order to take part in the fall workshop. It's nice if you are because then it's live, but you don't have to be here because all students will own these videos. This is, I should tell you, this is a paid class. We do, oh, maybe, I guess this year with this one will be four, that we've done four paid classes. And this one is the mother of all BSU classes. <laughs> in my opinion, because it's taken me probably like six months to get my head around how I'm going to do it. And what it's going to be is going to be Miriam Haskell style vintage beading, which is a special love of mine. And I think I've learned to do it half decent. So I'm going to show you the little tricks that I've learned using parts that that company might have used back in the day. It's going to be very authentic. Um, but none of the designs, projects in the video are anything that I copied from a book or a picture from Pinterest or anything. I can't copy to save my life. I've told you that so many times, but it's the truth. I can't copy anybody because you can only show me just so much and I got to exit stage left. I mean, I got to do it my own way, like I always say. So I can't copy anybody. I don't want to copy anybody. I want to learn how to do that kind of cage work beading in that style using similar methods and techniques but going my own way. So we're going to be doing four projects and to give you an idea of what we'll be doing I have sample projects right here. Um, the first one I have is this necklace which is completely caged and it's got check uh, snail beads here. These are not the Miriam Haskell pearls, although we do have them at the website, okay? We do have the, the more authentic ones there. They're Japanese, they're made in a style. And this is like on a bow tie finding, which we sold at, sold at uh, Bisu Boutiques for many, many years. You may even have one in your stash. But what we have here is we have a builder, which is the one that's dapped up. And we have a backer, which is completely flat. And you do your wiring to the builder, and then you cover it with the backer. Because as you can imagine, all that wire coming through the back is a mess. So you cover it, and then you don't have a mess. So we have one that's kind of like this. And my idea for this one came from the Miriam Haskell book. And let me just show you this book. If you've been in my uh, responsible repurposing classes in the past, you've seen this book or perhaps you own a copy because I tell everybody, if you have any love for this jewelry at all, this is the book to buy. And you can get it on Amazon. It costs around 50 bucks. Worth it. Worth it. Um, Kathy Gordon and Sheila Pamphilot, two Pamphiloff, two ladies that I have a lot of respect for in the collecting business, wrote this book. And um, I was so tickled to get a copy right when it first came out. I think they signed it for me too, but I can't remember where it is. But anyway, I really like these ladies and the things that they have taught about it, the, the history of it and so forth. But the, what I did want to show you real quick without, you know, really using the book to like teach anything here because um, I would really need to have permission to do that. Um, but anyway, this necklace is the one that inspired this one. So you can see, no way is it the same thing. It just inspired, it's got that bow tie shape, okay? But to be really truly like Haskell, there would be multiple strands going here. 
And I do have some of this nice scroll chain that's in this necklace, but it's old copper coat and needs to be plated. So maybe one day I will get it plated. But, and then we'll do some multiple ones. But anyway, it's gonna be a project sort of kind of like this. And then the next project we're gonna be doing in the class, let me set this aside, is um, we're gonna have this nice brooch. And there's a pair of earrings that goes with it as well, which I haven't gotten worked out yet. But it's a brooch and it's very deep. The thing is when you do this kind of beading without getting too deep into it, is it's about layers and you know that you know, we've done assemblage before together so, so many times. And assemblage is layers. You put your big pieces on the bottom, you put your middle-sized pieces in the middle, and then you do the embellishments on top. Well, with cage works, it's kind of like that, but not entirely. It's a lot of trial and error and getting everything to fit up just right and a lot of troubleshooting. So I'll teach you some of my tricks about that in this class too that you'll find helpful. I've been doing this a long time. And I'm still working hard at improving on it because there's a lot to it. But I like to show you because if you're be if you're beaters at all, I'm sure you'll pick up on it quickly. And even if you're not, if you like assemblage, you still will. It's just a little bit fussy, but very, very satisfying when you finish it. So this one's nice and tight. There's a cotton pearl in here. Now, in the Haskell jewelry, it probably would have been uh, Japanese glass. But then going back, before the 40s, it might have been Czech. Um, this is a cotton pearl, which is Japanese. It's not glass, it's cotton, with a knocker over the top, which is a pearl finish over top. And they're made in Japan, all of them are. They're really, really good, and they're very authentic vintage, have that look to them. And then all this brass is brass that they might have used in their jewelry way back when these pearls and these beads coming down the same way. And then, as you can see, it's builder and backer, and this is wear it on. I could have done a better job. So we'll talk about that in the class. But I don't like to use glue when I do these. Um, there are two tiny little pieces that are glued in, in this piece, because I had no choice. I had to do it to finish the assemblage out right, and there was just no work to attach. But I strive very hard not to use much glue at all if I can avoid it. But I will also in this class show you how to do it with glue if you'd rather. So there you go, you're gonna have more options. And then this is the necklace that I wanna do. I've done this necklace before, and the last one I made I sold it right away, so I don't have to compare, I have pictures, but this is, this is a, my bouquet, flower bouquet pendant. It looks like a flower bouquet. Here's the holder and here's the bouquet. That's my head, that's how it goes. And then I have attached pearls here, but um, if it was truly a Haskell piece, like I say, it would have multiple strands probably here than just a single. I like multiple strands. It's not that fussy. There are a few tricks to doing it, but it's not that fussy. It's just, I, I'm i more comfortable with just a single strand when I'm wearing something, but it is very showy if you make several. I mean, can you imagine if you had several strands of these put together going up? You know, that, that could be pretty cool looking. But this is all built on a heart finding, which you can't even see now because it's so covered and it's backed with filigree, which is manipulated around the front and sides. So I'll teach you how to do that. That's a little bit fussy, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Anything I can do, believe me, you can do it because I don't do anything that's horribly hard. Sometimes just tedious and fussy, but not hard. Nothing about this is hard. It's just fussy. That's all. And then the last piece we'll do I don't really have the sample completely made, but I'm going to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. It's a bracelet. This is a bracelet blank that I made clear back in 2004 and never finished it. This one is glued. It's these filigree that we sell at our site all the time. We run out of them a lot too, but I always order them right back in. This piece is so good for building bracelets. I built bracelets on this piece for years previous to making this one. But anyway, this one, the way I did it is, of course, you can see they're just jump ring, double jump ring. And then it's got a box class. This is a vintage box, box class that I happen to have. And then instead of doing the backer piece wired to the back, I did brass blanks. You can see they've aged a little bit because I didn't 
you know, finish the necklace. So that would need to be shined up and then sealed so that it wouldn't look like that again. But um, it's basically what we're going to be doing for the bracelet is something like this. Only this piece will be wired to all the design to it will be wired to it. And then when it's all on and all fit up just the right way, there will be backer pieces on all of it to hide the wire. So it won't be quite like this. But if you wanted to make one like this and not have to go through all that, then you could do it this way too. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in the class. But I have a few of the sections made for the brace. I'm just not done with it yet. But this one I was working on last night. So it would look kind of like this. If you can imagine having something like this going across, this would be very ornate till you were done with it but just I don't know to me very satisfying because it's so vintage and it's so like the Haskell pieces it's Haskell not Haskell if you know what I mean it's Bisou is what it is so I'll show you my way because that's all I know I never worked there I don't know so um, I met some people who worked there at one time but I didn't you know they didn't teach me how to make it because I just loved it and learned how so anyway so going back in time you know i've been doing this a while we have a video about this um chocolate and peanut butter brooch it's kind of goofy it's all wired up there's i think if you go back 2015 2016 it's when we were carrying the chalksy brass which i can't get anymore so i said to say but it's just an example of showing you how you don't have to do it on the golden or gold plated brass you can do any color. I'm really excited for when my next batch of uh, matte black brass comes in because I would love to do something, you know, in the matte, ba matte black brass with um, colored jewels in it. That would be just so striking. So, you know, this, the way you want to do it, I mean, you can do shabby whites too and paint it, you know, anything you want. But we'll talk about how you would approach that in the class because there's a certain way you got to do it if you want it to come out right. So if you want to go back on YouTube, you might be able to find this video. Um, this I made about 1998, and I think I've probably showed you before. It's a bracelet that is all wired together. There's no glue, but it's a little rough inside because I just was playing with it and didn't really know what I was doing, but it came out pretty good, you know. So I, I kept it. I never sold it. I could have sold it, but I didn't want to. And it has earrings to go with it. Right here. So we're going to learn how to make a pair of earrings, too, in the class. And they're going to be clip earrings because that would be authentic to the time. So um, if you don't like clips, then you'll just want uh, posts with real big pads on them. And you'll be fine. But anyway, that's what we're going to be doing in this class. And there's still time for you to sign up. In fact, you can sign up for this class anytime. Because after it's all recorded, we will have those recordings. So if you want to purchase the class at some time in the future, say you don't see this video till a long time after now, and you think, oh, I missed it. No, you didn't. You didn't miss it. We will have it housed on the website. And all you'll need to do is just you pay for it. It's $135 because it's a very extensive class. Like I say, I pounded my head for six months to get this together. So it's cheap when you consider. Um, I got all the parts lined up. There were kits, but they're sold out at this time. So what I'm going to do is um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to make demi kits that people can pick up. And, you know, they'll have maybe basic parts like rosemont tees. These are the rosemont tees and some of this golden brass. And uh, you need 28 gauge wire to do this. You probably have some. Uh, just uh, little caging leaves and stuff like that that are kind of essential pieces. So we'll have little demi kits here in a couple of weeks for you. But anyway, uh, the class, like I say, is $135. You can sign up at bisouboutiques.com. There's a link right there. We'll put one here on this video, too. Um, you can pay in four payments if you like. We have the PayPal for pay, and it's right at the checkout. So all you do is just click on it. And PayPal will break that up into four payments for you that they will get from you. I won't have anything to do with that. You know, you'll be doing it through them, but there's no interest. And another thing cool at PayPal, if you're not, not um, familiar with it, 
PayPal has PayPal credit, which is my personal favorite. I love PayPal credit. I use it with a lot of my overseas vendors. And it is wonderful. Or if you see something, at, you know, on Etsy or some this or that, you just want to pick it up and get it done. You don't want to have to whip your card out every time. Or see if you have enough in your balance or whatever. Um, you use PayPal credit. And you have to apply for it. There's no interest for six months. No interest for six months. So they'll give you like a credit limit, just like a credit card. And when that's used up, you have to be sure it's paid down. We won't be able to use it anymore until it's paid down. And your purchases have to be paid for in six months, but there's no interest. It's marvelous. I am so thrilled that I have access to that. So you might want to look into that. So it's not just for, you know, business people. It can be for individuals as well. You can take advantage of it. So there's that. So uh, you can sign up at the class at the site, or you can call us at 1-800-868-4393. Business hours, 9 to 5. And we could talk to you about it. Not this Friday, though. I'll be online. <laughs> Not the next five Fridays. Forget it. I'm going to be online um, doing the class with everybody. So, so far we have, I think, 36 students, which is pretty good. But we can take as many as want to come because it's online. It's all online. There's a Facebook classroom where you can get the URLs. But if you can't stand Facebook and you just can't hold your nose and do Facebook, then um, you'll just have to let me know when you buy your class and I'll have to send you the playlist for the class later on. But if you want to get on this week, you could still participate in the Facebook classroom, which is on for the duration of the videos and then usually for about a month after. So you can post pictures, share, ask questions, all that stuff, you know. And the members of the class are going to receive a uh, a discount code that they can use during the time of the class in case they want to pick stuff up. It'll help them out a little bit. And so we have that too. So if you have any questions at all, please put them underneath, you know, the video here. Put comments. Please put comments. Kind comments are always welcome. We will respond. We watch. And we will respond as quickly as we can if you have any questions. And like I said, you can call to 9 to 5 p.m. EST. We're in Ohio. So um, love to have you in the class. I don't think there's anything quite like this out there as I've looked. You can do it. Have ever seen a few people doing this type of beating? A few are in the vintage community and they've got a real good feel for it and I love their work. But some of the beading teachers that I've seen that just do your standard, you know, all the different stitches of beading and the seed beading and all that, have tried to do it. And they do a good, good, clean job, but it just doesn't have the soul. And the reason it doesn't is because they don't have the love of vintage. And I do. So I think that's the whole difference. You know, to get good at it, if you love old jewelry, and especially if you love Miriam Haskell jewelry, um, you're going to learn a lot from this class. But once again, you will not be copying anything. It's no fun to copy. What's the fun is, is to take the techniques and make it your own. And you never know where you'll go with it. It could be great. So that's pretty much what I had to tell you today. There will not be a regular video on Friday this week. But starting next Friday, there will be again. We wanted to get on early this week and show you the class because I didn't have my samples ready. I was so, so tardy at getting my samples ready this time. But um, I have a good many now. And wouldn't it be so lovely to make a piece like this? It's got so much dimension and so much layering. Oh, my goodness. When I show you how to make this, you're going to say, that's on there? I never saw that. <laughs> that's how this type of, of jewelry is. It's so layered. You can't always tell what parts were used to make it. So anyway, I'll look forward to seeing you in class maybe, huh? Love to have you. And uh, once again, leave questions, leave comments. We'd love to have you. And uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, you, can call, you can call me or jordan at bsuboutiques.com. Dot com. That's the email to use. J-O-R-D-A-N at bsuboutiques.com. Okay. I'm done for now. Hope you'll consider this. Come and have some fun with us. And thanks a lot for watching. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because there are a lot of unusual mixed media type jewelry making things on our channel that are unique and different from a lot of others. Um, like the video if you do. 
And tell your friends about us, please. Please tell your friends about us. And comment, please. We would love it. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.